My name is Dimpna and I want to thank Martin and St John's Parish for the privilege of speaking to you. This has been an Easter like no other and it's not hard to have that sense that this is somehow an historical moment. All these comments about this period of time coming up as questions on history papers in the future doesn't seem so far-fetched. But the reality is that we're always living and even making history. Today's an historical day in our house because on this day 22 years ago our twin daughters were born. And I've been thinking a lot about that period in my life recently and wondering what lessons it has to teach me in this time of the coronavirus. For eight weeks before our daughters were born I was confined to bed rest in hospital to try to ensure that the pregnancy would go full term and that our daughters would be born strong and healthy. My husband and I both knew that it was the right thing to do, but that didn't make it any easier. Being in hospital was really hard because I had three small children still at home and it was just as difficult for my husband who was trying to hold down a full time job and be both parents at one time. And although the safe delivery of our daughters was a time of great joy and celebration, it didn't prove to be the release that I had anticipated. I found myself back at home with two babies and a toddler and three small, uh, two small children at primary school. And very soon was in an endless cycle of feeding and changing nappies and doing laundry and finishing homework and cooking meals and the days just started to blend into one. I'm sure many of you can relate to that sort of experience in the everyday, never mind during this pandemic and lockdown. For most of that first year of my life, of the girls' lives, my only way of coping was to tell myself that if I could just get them to two weeks, I'd be okay. If I could just get them to a month, I'd be okay. If I could just get them to three months, I'd be okay. And on and on I went for the full year. You get the picture. <laughs> um, it was really only by the time that our daughters had their first birthday that I began to really believe that my domestic situation was not going to overwhelm me, that I was going to be okay and that I didn't have to do it on my own. I try very hard looking back not to judge myself too harshly. That time was a point where Easter and the sense of the tomb was very real for me. Um, I felt like I was waiting for a miracle that would never actually happen. And then when it did, despite the joy and celebration that I felt, it didn't turn out to be the complete release that I hoped for or expected. And I wonder... To myself, was it anything like that for Mary and the Apostles on that first Easter? It certainly feels a little bit like that this year. Many of us have and continue to experience a sense of being confined. The waiting is very personal and painful. And for some of us, perhaps even the sense of being in the tomb is very real. One of the things that period 22 years ago taught me was that by always looking forward, by always waiting for the miracle yet to come, I was missing out on the present, on the miracle in the everyday. And I thought that the birth of our daughters would end my confinement and provide a release. And it did. But as one journey ended, another one began. And it brought with it its own challenges and its own confinement. I thought that everything would go back to normal once I came home with our daughters. But I had been changed by my experience and the world had changed too. There was a new normal and the challenge for me was to adjust to it, to bring all that I had learned from my time in the hospital and to try to be the best mother I could to our children in the face of all these new challenges which presented themselves. 
Cardinal Vincent Nichols, in his Easter address, spoke of the experience of being in the tomb in the context of this pandemic. And he urged us to ensure that all of this experience is not wasted. That the community spirit, the caring and generosity, the selflessness, the looking out for the vulnerable and the weak in our communities, that we use all of this experience to transform our world on the other side of it and to make the message of the gospel real and alive for people everywhere. When Jesus emerged from the tomb, his followers didn't recognise him. He had been transformed and utterly changed. And I believe that none of us can emerge from an experience of the tomb. That waiting for the miracle for release without being changed. The world into which we will enter after this experience will be different and not necessarily easy. But we can learn and are learning from this experience that we are stronger together. And we know now that we are not on our own and we can make a difference. In light of these Easter mornings, we trust and we hope that the risen Lord is with us and the endless waiting has not been in vain. Mm -hmm.